Now, I have tried a lot of different damn MM Wave sensors. And if you're not fully familiar with MM Wave, just think of it as a radar sensor that detects if a person is breathing or making those little minute movements that a human, you know, would typically make that would be alive. And it picks up and, you know, you set your sensitivity. Now, if you don't want to be, you can't set it too sensitive and then say some ceiling fans and everything. But once you kind of get things tweaked, it works damn awesome. Now they do have this little two year one. It is a pre-built guy. It's Zigbee, has just a little USB port on the bottom. It does work well, but I don't have any humidity with it. So yeah, if you have something, you just want to throw this on a little plate or whatever, these absolutely do work great and they're ready to go and they're not that expensive. So of course you'll find all the links to everything down below. And there's, I tried this one. This one goes in the ceiling. It's a kind of like a little downlight deal, but it only faces down. That's not a bad thing in most cases, but I still need to put it in a box, even though it's low voltage. But yeah, I didn't have humidity with this one either. And I, yeah, just, I needed more. So next up, going in the DIY side, well, I guess, and you remember the Aquaria is, yeah, this one's not DIY, but um, I, I wasn't spending $82 plus tax and whatever for a sensor to go in my bathroom. So um, yeah, that's a nope for me on that one. And that one is Wi-Fi and that whole cloud app. I wanna do something fully local. So that led me next to try out the DF robot one. I believe this sensor is in that presence one sensor. You've probably seen all the little hype about, but I found it to be a little slow and it's just plugging it up to an ESP chip such as this, an ESP32 or ESP266. You can get these and they're easy to program. You just plug up the little USB. They're pretty simple. We'll go over later in the video. Don't be scared if you haven't messed with these. These are pretty damn cool. Even though I've been messing with them in years, I'm still impressed with them. But this sensor, I found it to be a little slow and I guess that's why they paired it with the PIR sensor. And then it was also pretty expensive for what it was. And it's, I guess, being an older sensor, I threw it out. So next down the line was LD, this is a high link sensor. And this is the LD2410, I believe. I've seen these around and people talking about them, they're Bluetooth. And yeah, I'll just say it, the Bluetooth sucks on them. After a couple hours, it would just fall off the network and then it would just wouldn't work and you'd have to really mess around with it, reboot things. And yeah, it just really wasn't worth it. Now you can hook these up to an ESP chip and put ESP home on them. And then you can get around the whole Bluetooth issue. But um, this model has some really stupid small pin headers on it. And so that kind of it makes it difficult for some people unless the, you get the little wires that come with that one. Or I guess you've got to order it extra on that kit. But they do make an LD2410 that actually has DuPont jumpers. I think I have one already with the DuPont jumpers. Yeah, right here. This one with the DuPont jumpers on it. And it's the, pretty much the same chip and um, you just rock and roll with that and throw it into ESP32. But the ESP home side of it, it's kind of difficult to tweak. It, it's, it's a little more advanced what I needed. Now I'm not gonna totally throw that sensor out now. I mean, I have several of them. I may use them somewhere else. So I did try also from Highlink as well, is LD, I think this is the 1115, I believe. But I wasn't able to tweak things as much with this guy. So um, I, I went back to one that I kind of fell in love with. It's like the middle of the road thing. And it's not that expensive of a sensor. I think right as of the recording of this video is the LD1125 is around 10 to $12 US. And it's a pretty small size. I mean, look the comparison of the ESP chip. It's smaller than it. Now, the only thing that's gonna be weird about it 
is the pins on the back. You need the smaller, I think they're two millimeter, but I probably need to correct if I don't get the size right. There's some smaller DuPont jumper ends. And they do make these, you can made up already, but you can see the different size of them. Let's see if we can get that in the camera. You can see the size is a lot different between the two different sizes of DuPont jumpers, but just make sure you get the right jumpers for these versus, you know, the regular style DuPont jumper, but you got to have them on either side. You get what I'm saying. So that way you can plug it straight up to the ESP8266 or I went with ESP32 because there really isn't a reason to do 8266 unless you just have them around. I prefer to go ESP32 and that what is that? Well, that's that's going to be these ESP32. You can get these off of AliExpress, Amazon or whatever. I'll leave all the links down below for these and I how do you power them, Travis? I know people have asked in the past. Is I've even done something like this taking an old power supply of something that was, this one is a, a 12 volt power supply. And I've even done ones of feeding this 12 volts and don't freak out. That does work on some 8266s and Node MCUs, but I've had them powered and just put some DuPont jumpers on the wire, but well, let's not go down that road. I didn't say, I, I said we weren't going to do any soldering or, and these are pretty damn cool. I found these on Amazon. I'm sure they're on AliExpress and whatever. I'll probably link them around. It's your regular little old school micro USB. And while I'm saying that, I have seen some issues with the USB-C ESP32s that are out there on this Node MCU board. I've seen some issues with some power issues and then trying to keep them booted. So I've been staying away from the USB-C ones, even though I do love the ESPs with USB-C. But this is pretty cool because this is the whole wire. You can take, and it is, if you can see the stuff here, probably look pretty close. You just gonna see the positive and negative. And that way you could run whatever wire over to it, you know, like a low voltage wire into that box. And then you could come up with your wire here and plug it in and go just like that. I did this design a little differently. You can see I put DuPont jumpers, female ones, and that way I could unplug and plug the chip. But then this also lets that chip breathe a little more. And so you don't get the heating from the ESP chip in the box. Now you're not gonna use the temperature sensor. I'll just be blunt with you now because it, it, on the ceiling, it's not that great. And the heat from this is, it's gonna drive your stuff up. And it, you can't really win with a temperature sensor on a mains powered device all the time. If you want good temperature, go get something Zigbee battery powered or maybe even Bluetooth battery powered that wakes up and then sleeps and just doesn't self heat. Um, but this helps maybe get a little better on the humidity reading because the heat, you know, just stays away from things. But that's all up to you and how you want to build it. If you want to build something that goes in the wall, uh, you want to build something in a different 3D printed case or whatever type of thing. Because, you know, the MM Wave, think about it. You don't have to really see it like you did a PIR sensor. You could hide it in something as long as it's not metal because metal, of course, is going to stop that 24 gigahertz really well, which is not a bad thing if you're trying to hide it from some ceiling fans. You can actually use some different uh, metal pieces and things to, um, you know, direct the signal from being able to see a, a constant moving device such as a computer fan or ceiling fan or whatever else may be moving in the room. Well, I've got to go do some node red flows because I've got some other ideas in my mind of, hey, if someone stays in the bathroom for so long and the humidity never rises, go ahead and turn that fan on for them. You never know what they may be doing in there that long. Um, Cause some people don't think about that, especially the little young ones. Press all them buttons down there. Appreciate all the Patreon subscribers, YouTube members. Definitely couldn't do it without you to bring projects such as this to the YouTube channel. And y'all take care.
Yeah. Hi. What are you high from? This. <laughs> I'm high in the sky. <laughs> Be loud, bro. You, you ready, OG? Yeah. See you later, bro. Yeah. Bye, Owen. Is that good? Oh, yeah. It's scary. <laughs> 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 <laughs>